What's up YouTube? My name is Lazy Tryhard and today I'm going to be continuing our tutorial series in libgdx and all that fun stuff. But before we start all that, I again, so many of you guys have been asking for this and I just got home, so I thought I'd put this up immediately. Uh, this is called GitHub. This is basically where I will store my code. Yes, my code that I actually do in my programs, which so many comments, again, I apologize immensely for not doing this earlier. But it's up now, so for all you guys who are struggling, trying to figure out what's wrong with your programs, you can just copy-paste the code, which, I, again, I wouldn't recommend doing, but it's here for a reference point if you need it. So I'll put a link in the description to the actual uh, repository, and that's just what the code is called. That's the fancy term for it. But if you, like, for some reason can't access the uh, actual site through the link that I provide, you just type in lazy tryhard on github.com and go to my profile and again no profiles but you have the libgdx tutorial series and from here you have everything you need you have the source com brand and just keep clicking until you get all these uh, javas you have our cute little tree entity you have our enemy all of this fun stuff and this will constantly be updated every time that I put out a video so in this video I'll actually update the code so that it has all the uh, stuff that we're going to do and get into in a second but again I just thought that I would get us started with that because that is so long overdue but now we're gonna get into some real, pretty cool stuff so today I thought what we go over is how to do a button how to have like you have um, you have this player or whatever but if you're doing like anything on a tablet you can't really work you can't really move this guy because we don't have keyboards or anything like that so what I, I, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do a button and then I'll theoretically show you how to how a button can like manipulate position or whatnot so I'm just gonna put a button right down here and I again I hope you guys enjoy that because I dev obviously that's one of the huge UI uh, components so that's what we're gonna be going into today so the fr again follow me here we're gonna go to a bunch of different places but if you stay with me and if you have any questions again post it in the comments I would love to get back to you guys so we're gonna need a couple of things we're gonna need this thing called a texture atlas and we're gonna call it a button atlas now that's just what we're, the images for the buttons are gonna be because we don't have like a uh, just like a standard button we're gonna have to pull an image from the internet and the texture atlas is gonna hold that image that is gonna be the button so then we're gonna need a text text uh, <laughs> text button style which is just like the syntax of the um, the font the color uh, of the text because we're gonna actually put some text in the button so that we can designate what does what so that that'll just be that uh, we're gonna need the text button itself we're just gonna call it button and we're gonna need this thing called a skin now don't worry about what a skin is you really don't have to do too much with it it's just kinda like a nice way to um, manage the images that you have from your texture atlas and again don't be too intimidated by these things honestly I don't really know the full un I don't have a full understanding of everything here but it, honestly I just kinda go with it and it just works perfectly so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna initialize a couple of these things and once we get to a point where we need to go get images from the internet that's when we'll stop and uh, move on so skins just can equal a new skin and I know oh so scary right now we're gonna need some help here uh, the button atlas is gonna need is gonna be a new texture atlas we're gonna initialize it but it needs a file handle and it's gonna need a pack file from uh, gdx.internal somewhere just in here in our assets so we're gonna have to make that right now we'll just call it buttons dot uh, button dot pac and you gotta surround that in quotes for it to work and there that's done again I have it right here but I, I'm gonna delete it or I'll show you I'll walk you guys how to make this pack now there's another link in the description check that out because it's gonna pull up this thing called a gdx texture packer this is what's going to make the .pack file. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new pack, and because I called it a button.pack, we're going to call it button.pack. So now we have this thing. Nothing really happened. Well, crap. It asks for an input directory and an output directory to 
those are basically just two folders, an in and an out. I usually make these in, within the tutorial class or whatever, or within the tutorial folder uh, where I have it stored. So you can make whatever you want as long as it just points to it. So if you go to input directory, um, as long as it doesn't freeze, obviously, which is kind of freezing. There we go. So, uh, so we're in the tutorial. We actually got to go up. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. So you got to go to tutorials in. That's going to be it. Just set it to that folder and set this to the out folder. <coughs> but if you just created this folder, you're not going to have anything in it. Now, I have two buttons created in it, and that's the next part we're going to make because you don't have anything in here. So we go to the internet. And I already pulled up, I just type in button on Google or whatever, and I pulled up this button because it looks kind of artsy. So uh, pull up this uh, image, just save it, screw it, um, and then show in one folder, edit it. There we go. All right, so we got this. I'm just in paint. No big deal. You don't need like Photoshop or anything like that to do to do this. So I'm just gonna put this in the top left and crop it. Oh frick. Okay, you stay. You stay. Okay. So it doesn't again, I'm just kind of roughly doing this. Uh crop it and that's gonna be your first that's gonna be uh the button. That's gonna be button. Now you save that, I'm not gonna save it. Because I already have it. Um, but make sure it's button. Because uh, that's the the packer's going to check it. So, and we're not going to do anything fancy when we when essentially uh, what this button pressed is going to be is the same image, but we're going to rotate it vertically so that like when our cursor goes over it, it just like it it looks interactive. So I'll I'll explain that in a sec. But then save as don't save, but do button uh, press dot jpeg and check your syntax. It has to be it has to be that way. So if you did all that, you should have the button and the button pressed. Now, oh frick, mine are PNGs. May, you can uh, make sure they're PNGs. They might work with JPEGs, but oh, I'm sorry. I totally kind of brain farted on that. But if you do save as and you change it to a PNG, you shouldn't have any problems as it is. So um, change those to PNGs if you want. If you want to try JPEGs, you know, go to town. Um, but now that we have that, we have two things in the input directory, all right? So our output directory, like I said, has nothing. Where does that go? So output, mine has nothing. So don't, again, disregard this. You have nothing. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to delete that. Screw that. Um, so now you have nothing. So you're going to go here. You got all this figured out. You're going to say pack them all. And it's going to do that. And you're going to have this cute little weird image that you have no idea what it does. Uh, and again, don't worry about it. So, oh, hey, these two things came up. Well, oh, frick. And change it to button.pack.pack. We'll just rename it to button because that's kind of important. So um, we actually have to change this to just change it to button because it needs to be button.png. Um, right? Yeah. OK, so you take these two things that you got from your output, uh, and then you drag them into a folder. Again, you can call it button. You can call it whatever. But I just called it buttons because it just makes it easier to organize the stuff. And then I just dragged and dropped into here. So if we open up this button.pack, or just .pack, you see basically the, these two things. You see the button image and the button pressed image. Now, these keywords are very important because um, what we're going to do is we're going to use these two images as different states of the button. If the button is currently not being moused over, then we want it, the image to be button. But if, we, if the button is moused over or pressed, we want it to be button pressed. So how does that really necessarily play out? Well, I'm about to show you guys. I'm glad you asked. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to continue along. So if we run this right now, it should work. Nothing's real again. Nothing's changed, but this thing's been initialized, which means we didn't get a no pointer, which is awesome. So what you're going to do next is you're going to do skin dot add regions button atlas again. Tag on it button atlas there, and that just adds the button atlas to the skin, which makes it easier to maintain and manage. Just again, an, a necessary step that I don't necessarily understand to the fullest. But you just gotta. Ex most of these things you just gotta accept uh, until um, 
who knows what happens. So next you're going to do a button style. We're going to initialize the button style and that's going to be a just a new text button style, nothing too fancy. Um, excuse me. Um, so this next one, button style dot up. This is going to equal um, skin dot get drawable button. Now this this is getting what uh, the tech the button dot pack says right here button. So it's going to get this image and it's going to uh, put it for button style dot up. And the button style dot up is when again nothing is being moused over. It's not, the button's just there. It's just present. Nothing else matters. Uh, nothing is being, it's not being interacted with in the slightest. It's just there. So, on the contrary, button style dot over equals skin dot get drawable uh, button pressed. So, that is when we mouse over a button. So, like you see right here, when I moused over, that, like it changed. Now it's the same, or now it's something different, different. So, this is when I mouse over. Um, so then we're just going to do a couple more button style dot down and that's when we click the actual button and again I'm not going to get too complicated you guys know what that means um, that's just if you click it it's going to be this image for like a split second so um, do what you want go bananas with that um, but right now I'm just dealing with kind of showing you guys the contents um, and the button style dot font. This is the font that it's going to. The button is going to display when we put in text. And we're just going to do font because we've already initialized this font up here, and it's just going to put that. So if we run this, it should all work perfectly, and it does because I'm awesome. Um, now we're going to actually initialize the button. So button equals new text button, uh, and it's going to be. Let's put the lazy tryhard is awesome because he is and it's going to have the button style because it takes the it takes the style that we need um, just like the whole label style most of these run like they have the same constructors uh, the state it's it runs on the style button style this time as opposed to the label style or text style um, and then it just takes the string in which you want to post so if we do this right now uh, button or excuse me uh, state stage dot add actor because we have to add the button to the stage in order for it to be initialized, drawn, and updated and stuff. Uh, we're going to get this. Lazy Trier is awesome. Nothing's really going on though. We click on it, nothing happens. We go over it, nothing happens. Poop. Well, we have to freaking do the following. We have to, um, and again, don't be f intimidated by this. Um, GDX dot, actually we're going to do this um, after the stage dot add actor. Uh, GDX dot input dot set input processor stage. This again this line of code just means that um, we take the input processor which is like the mouse coordinates or whatever and we apply them to the stage so that the stage can know if our mouse is over. So if we do that it's gonna finally like check like again mouse over or it's not mousing over the button now it is so now it changes. Woohoo! Right but we click on it, nothing really happens. Um, so actually, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to get rid of these system.out statements. Or we're just going to comment them because we don't really need them right now. Do we have any other one? We have another one. There we go. Okay. So we're going to comment these two guys um, because I want it to be like if you click it, it'll say like mouse click or button clicked or whatever. So where was I? There we go. And this is where we have to put a thing called an input listener. Now a listener, what a listener does is it basically listens for the uh, input of the computer or the mouse and if, you, if it clicks on it, it heard it and it's going to do the following. And it takes a really complicated syntax to do this, um, but do not, as long as you do like, again, follow this code, you don't have to under necessarily understand all of it. Um, but you just have to understand how to um, do all the just the basic stuff. So we have to do a button dot add listener. It's adding a new we're in a, we're initializing a new input listener, and all by itself or all by itself, it's perfect, awesome. But it doesn't do anything um, because we have to check for the um, t 
touch down method. Um, touchdown. Excuse me. It's going to check for the touch down method. And again, just hit it. No, not that one. Stupid. Um, it's going to check for the touchdown. Now, again, just follow me on this. Don't be too intimidated. But this basically just does, you don't have to put anything, you don't have to know what any of this means. This, but basically, X is the coordinate of your mouse, Y is the coordinate of the Y coordinate of your mouth, mouse, the button is this button, and the event is the actual thing that happens, which is the touchdown. So, just get rid of all this code, because it's gross. But we, it's going to be like, oh, frick, we have to return a boolean, because we do. And just say return true, because after... Um, once it's true, it's going to just go to the next thing. So now, we're going to do a system... Oh, fr what the frick? Get you out of there. System.out.println and do clicked. So now, fingers crossed that everything works out like it always does. We click on it. Clicked. Two, three, four. So you click on it and it works. So if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to... Um, change the position position dot x or play excuse me gosh player dot get position dot x equals two I and again this would like jump me but um like for a tablet a tablet can hit this and it'll work and you can like make the player move uh, left or right and that'll be a little more smooth oh, frick so, it moves really slow, and if you're not holding it down, um, and that's a whole other thing, don't worry about it, but um, you got to hold it down and stuff like that. But that's basically how it works. That's how a button works. You can do a bunch of different things. Again, you can change this to lazy tryhard is lame, which is a complete lie, but uh, you, you can do it all the same. And it, it, this really helps for developing a... Uh, good main menu, a good, just any type of menu. So, I hope that helps. I uh, hope you enjoy this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if there's anything you want me to do, again, I'm going to be here for one more day, so I'll get at least one more tutorial out. And uh, so, again, I need you all to go bonkers in the comments section below and tell me what kind of UI element you want me to do, because I, I, I just want to do one more, because I feel like after that, you guys can get a uh, pretty good gist on it. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you for the 500 su subscribers. I've been in college this entire time, and like, whoa. It was like, again, no idea. Like, I keep getting all these, oh, so-and-so subscribe. I, and I reached 500. Again, absolutely amazed. You guys are absolutely awesome. I love you guys so much. And this winter, I promise you, I'm going to compensate you for you guys, for you guys' uh, love uh, for this and dedication to this. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please rate, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys later.